So we're going to look at how to write a quick plugin for Etherpad Lite. Um, first thing we're going to do is set up our Etherpad Lite instance. Uh, number one thing to do is make sure that Minify is set to false and that max age is set to zero. And we're also going to want to make sure that we uncomment the users section so that we can log in. Um, other than that, everything should be pretty much good to go. So we'll start that running. Okay, let's just make sure we can connect. So throughout this example, I'll be connecting on a 10 0 0 215. Make sure we can connect and we hit up. So what we're going to do is just create a little uh, toolbar um, example. And the easiest way to do that is just to, to grab another plugin and to just kind of make some modifications to that. Um, or we could just create it from scratch. So we've got a choice really. Um, we're in the uh, root folder here. And basically what we're going to do is jump into the node module folder. And we're going to make a plugin called EP and we're going to call it um, feedback. What's in that? Let's just call it feedback. Why not? Okay, so we're going to jump in here and we've got to make a few files. Um, first of which I think we'll do is package.json. So you can jump online and find a, a template package.json file. We're actually going to write one from scratch just so that we, uh, if we do make mistakes and we can at least find out what's going on. Um, we'll call this EP feedback version number. We're going to do uh, 0 0.1, Psh, don't really matter. Keyword, feedback button, something like that. Probably uh, we should comma separate those. And then a description. Uh, add a feedback button. To the toolbar and the contribute section. So you'll end up creating a boilerplate for this. I'm just doing it now so that basically so that I make mistakes so that when we come to run it, you'll see how I debug. Um, it should be worthwhile for you so that if you make mistakes you're kind of familiar with them so I know that this is a slow process but it's worth doing it like properly um, actually this is an object repository so we don't have a repository yet dependencies and we have no depths Actually, that's not true. We should probably put Etherpad in there as a dependency, but it's really not a problem. And make sure that it runs on node and close that off. So that's our package.json. Um, just quickly check. Yep, that looks good. So the next file is our ep.json, and this specifies the parts of the plugins. So say that it's parts. We're then create an array, create an object inside the array, name, and give it EP. And that actually should just be feedback. And then some client hooks. Yeah, this time we'll do a post date in it. So that's basically one subject, once the uh, Editor's view. Um, then basically empower it with some JavaScript. However, I think what we'll probably do is is just an add an EJS block. Um, we'll see. For now, we'll just do an EJS block, which is on the server side. Uh, so uh, for now, we'll do EJS block, and I think it's toolbar right. Uh, there, all of the blocks are available on. Um, so a block is essentially like an element on a page, um, but it's not doesn't match up with the div of the element that they, they're all specified. Uh, if I jump into the wiki, this to your size. 
Okay, and then look for um, uh, plugin framework API hooks. And then let's search for a toolbar. Maybe edit, yeah, edit bar maybe. Okay, and if you can't find them um, in here easily, the very simple way of doing it is just to jump to, um, I'll just save that as is, it's just to jump into your uh, source, templates, and then, so it's just to edit the file, and then look for say toolbar, and you'll see at the start you'll get uh, a block here so edit bar menu left so what we're going to do is put it on the right hand side so we'll do edit bar menu right should we call that yep there we go so we just copy this open up our hooks and we literally just say edit bar menu right that's where the hook's going to um, be added um, and then this is as simple as just saying uh, the location of the actual definition of the hook. This isn't the template file, this is the definition of the template file, which in our instance we will do uh, EP feedback, because that's the name of this plugin, slash, and then let's call it uh, feedback. We don't have to specify JS on the end or anything, we just literally do that. Uh, close the object, close the array, close the object. And that looks good to me. Okay, so now that we've got a package file and a JSON file, you remember in here we created a feedback, so we need a feedback.js. And basically in here we're going to specify the uh, template file that we're going to add. So uh, the easiest way that we do that is we add in our template templating system, which is uh, EJS. So we do require EP EPAD light node EJS. Again, you're only going to do this once this is going to be in your boilerplate, but it's just worth knowing how to do it. We're actually going to bring the server settings in as well. Now, you'll see why later. I'm just bringing them in now just for kind of my sanity and so that I don't forget. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say exports.ejs block. And then I'm going to say, uh, and then I need to do the, the uh, my, my, toolbar right section which was the edit bar right so ejs block edit menu, menu bar right equals function name arc callback last thing is going to be a return we're going to specify args.content equals args.content which is obviously the content that's going to be in the edit bar, edit bar menu right and then we're just going to do uh, uh, button foo button. I'm not even sure if that's the syntax off the top of my hand. Um, yeah, and and so essentially we've got the uh, the return back into the edit bar menu right set here, um, and we specify it here, and package.json is in. They're the three main files I think that we will need. Um, so what we'll do is we have to install that now. So the easiest way I find to do that is just to is to install it whilst the server's still running. Um, ah, great. Okay, so we've got an error. Now I'm kind of glad that we do have an error because, like I said, it's kind of inevitable that we do. Um, and it looks like well, it wasn't able to read our JSON file. Now I think we only had one JSON file. Uh, might have more. I want a question by the way. Oh, unless I was questioning myself. Um, but you now there's package and there's the ep.json. So one of these files isn't properly formed. So spot the obvious error time. Pretty sure that you can have a comma. No, I just heard that out just for sanity. Just 
Subscription contributors. Hmm, possibly, oops, possibly not in there. Just make sure. Um, so it could have been an ep.json. Okay, so if you do run into problems like this where you're just not sure um, what, if your JSON's valid or not, I mean, you try to do an install and you don't really get much useful information back. From what I can see, it's not specifying um, which file. Then your best bet is just to do like a JSON validator. Uh, so copy paste, open your favorite search engine, JSON validator. And you can just paste it in there, uh, hit validate. So in this instance, uh, getting valid JSON from the EP so maybe it's our package maybe we didn't specify something right who knows validate that it was valid JSON as well interesting so maybe we're missing uh, something that we need um, So the only thing that I didn't add is a repository to the package file. I don't, didn't think that you needed that. I'm going to put one in. Um, EP feedback. This is the only other place that it can really be. Um, Cause everything else looks good. I'm pretty sure you don't need a readme.md. Yeah. Okay, let's double check this out. Everything looks good. So this is a, a great reason why you'd probably use um, something to validate your, JAS, your JSON as you go through. Okay, so I was saying about how you're going to see how I uh, debug issues, and this is one of those things where I've just discovered a, a really useful tool, which is the npm debug log. I never saw this before. Uh, this is new to me. It's probably been there from day one, but it's one of those things, very useful. Uh, scroll down, and then I found the error, and you'll see here, invalid version 0 0.1. That was all it was. So, uh, we'd written everything absolutely perfect. Um, so we think, and it just looks like it doesn't like that version number. Go figure. So, give that another go. Okay, great. So that actually installed the uh, the plugin itself. Now you'll notice that obviously as we're we're installing um, and we're developing locally, we're just gonna have to stop and rerun the server, um, and it'll say straight away if there's any errors. Uh, and you see here we've got um, a through button on the right hand side. Okay, so let's go in and kind of make it less it's okay so feedback so again we've only actually got three files um, you can see the obvious mistake that I've made there um, I shouldn't have to um, I didn't think that I'd have to restart every time and um, you can see now we've got this foo and um, what we probably want is the foo but the feedback button uh, we could have it on the right hand side actually so Let's make it a little bit less sucky. Um, let's say it's a, uh, I don't know, let's say it's um, button icon inside there. So we can do that as a class. So button class equals button icon. 
and you know we want it to be uh, so if we just bring that over and we say uh, can we do this like class equals put on icon don't know if that'll work no um, and then we want this to be SIF feedback but we want to be able to um, what we really want is a button that, that does a, a link to a location so I know this is going to suck but window dot location but we want to specify the location so um, yeah it's kind of hacky this is just an example so I'm just going to kind of do it a hacky way but um, so I'm just going to get that started so it, I added the class but obviously it looks absolutely stupid um, we probably want to go ahead and style that in the same way that the like for example the user icon styled um, I think that it's seems to be here uh, duh, duh, duh. I mean styling's not going to be your, your biggest concern um, I guess it needs to be a Lee um, but anyway for now let's just do an alert because you can go ahead and you're going to want to mess around with that and, and make it do whatever you want to do on that point all right, so there we go. We've got an alert. Now, I mean, that's all good, and you're thinking, right, we kid. I'm super excited, etc. But what we really need is the is to be able to set the what the message is in the alert because if you if you know if you're messing around with with stuff, you need to know what your kind of like settings are and whatnot. So, um, what we need to say is uh, we need a setting for uh, that block and. Um, you know, we're going to have to set that in our settings.json. So, what we're going to do is if settings dot ep underscore feedback, which is the name of our plugin, uh, then we're going to say uh, uh, var message equals settings dot ep feedback, right? And then we're going to add this setting to settings.json so every plugin can have a setting in settings.json or multiple settings uh, in, in settings.json so in fact you know I might even do this I might be tempted to do uh, actually no, so let's just keep it simple and then we'll, we'll um, else and then we'll say our message equals hi so the original message oh shit um, plus message Okay, so I'm just gonna test, make sure that, that is all good. Okay, so fail to load. It's got an unexpected string in there. That's because I missed a plus. Damn my fingers in there, it's laziness. Right. Okay, we don't need that no more. So that uh, restarted cool. And next step is just to make sure this does high still. Yep. Okay, so now we're going to put the setting into the settings file. And this is really easy. Hit up your settings.json, jump down to the bottom, create a new object, EP feedback, make an object. Oh, in fact, you know what we could probably just do? Hide from settings file. Alright, let's try that. Um, I don't know if it's going to work or not. It's not. It should do, but it's not usually how I do it. I prefer that it we created an object, so EP feedback, um, and then you know like uh, feedback alert, and that would be much nicer. Um, so it'll uh, high from settings far correct place. Um, and then that's best practice really but just for the sake of this example I want to keep it simple and, and I'm just going to have that single string as, a, as the only kind of available option for this plugin but again do bear in mind that you need to use objects where objects are sensible so 
we should get high from settings now um, we'll need to restart the server because um, bear in mind you can restart the server from the web UI now I, I, just because I've got console handy okay so high from settings file that's because that option's available um, so this started off as like a, an example of how to create a feedback thing it ended up being just how to create a button but you can see that basically if you take this code and I, I will push this code up to github um, I guess at some point um, or even if you just take like the example that we we did there you could probably just follow it all the way through I mean it's 20 minutes so there's plenty of information there um, the main kind of takeaway points are you've got to install into node modules EP feedback well your first takeaway point is disable caching and minification right uh, your second thing is you're going to be developing in node modules uh, slash whatever your plugin is going to be called your plugins always going to start with EP underscore um, you're always going to have a minimum of three files right you're going to have your package.json your EP.json and your feedback.js um, your package is going to specify the type of npm package how you how you uh, who, who's the contributor as in what it's called um, your ep.json is going to uh, specify the parts of your plugin and then your .js files and your, you know you can use ejs html um, and whatnot um, are going to be your other the actual kind of crux of the plugin um, and so you know you can just do npm publish uh, i don't have uh, is, it, is it that And then I just set up my uh, npm user, and I can just literally publish this straight up to npm now. Um, and that means that you can just do npm install ep underscore feedback, and you'll be able to grab it. And so yeah, your first part was uh, make sure your environment's set up right by disable minification and whatnot. Second part is you're going to be working in node modules, and you're going to have a minimum of three files that you're going to be working with. Um, fourth part would be um, look at the npm debug if you've got installation messages and you're going to be installing with uh, npm install space or npm space install space node underscore modules slash and then the name of your plugin that's going to install it and then you're going to have to restart your etherpad light server whichever however you like doing that it's fine um, and then that should bring up your plugin and the other takeaway would be that you can store plugin settings in your settings.json and we would encourage you massively to do that um, and, and this is a really basic example of, of what a plugin can do you want to probably be more familiar with the uh, plugin docs and what I am um, I'm more familiar with the install anyway that's all uh, installed up to npm now so if somebody wanted to install that plugin they just uh, go to the plugin page on uh, etherpad Lite. And just to just to show you that as it is, I can go to this may or may not work. If we jump to my npm page, uh, we look for feedback in there. I don't think it's updated yet. No, npm can take a little while to update. Um, but yeah, quite a long tutorial, um, but it should get you started with how to develop either Padlite plugins. Um, if you want to see this source code, install the EP underscore feedback plugin. Feel free to copy it, paste, and brutalize it however you want. Have fun.